This is the launching site. In the blockhouse, not far from the rocket, hundreds of men are at work. Most of these men are scientists and engineers. Telemetry in launch condition. Affirmative. Missile in internal DC. Affirmative. Pressurization complete. Affirmative. Main stage. Four, three, two, one, zero. Part one. All of these men have worked and waited for this moment. Today, rockets can do many things for us. They can be military weapons, tools for scientific discovery, a means for transportation and exploration. As rockets are used more and more, it is important to find out what makes a rocket work. We can look for the answer in a backyard. What makes a sprinkler spin when you turn on the water? It's the same basic principle that makes a rocket rise from the earth. It's called a reaction. Every action has a reaction. The action of a boy's jump has a reaction that moves the wagon. Often, reactions aren't noticed. A frog doesn't care that the action of his jump has a reaction that pushes his log backwards. Reactions are often put to work. An automatic rifle is recocked by a reaction to the action of the bullet. And the action of a stream of gases rushing out from a rocket, as we see here in slow motion, has an equal and opposite reaction that moves the rocket forward. When the fuel inside a rocket burns, gases are formed that push in all directions. The action of some of these gases rushing out the open end of the rocket has a reaction that pushes against the closed forward wall. This reaction moves the rocket forward. A rocket moves itself. It doesn't need anything to push against as you do when you use a lawnmower and your foot pushes against the ground. It doesn't depend on friction. The tractor is moved forward by friction between the turning wheel and the earth. In fact, a rocket works best out in empty space, where there is no friction with air to slow it down. The Fourth of July Skyrocket is an old relative of the modern rocket. It's much smaller and simpler, but it works in about the same way. Like larger rockets, a Skyrocket is basically a hollow cylinder. 
At the fireworks factory, trained men pack the cylinder with fuel. Then one end is closed. But here a small hole is left. This is called a nozzle. When you close down the opening of a garden hose, the water goes faster. In the same way, closing down the open end of a rocket by forming a nozzle increases the speed of the gases that go through it, and the rocket goes faster. When the fuel is used up, the rocket slows down. But if we could get more fuel to the coasting rocket, the rocket would speed up and go faster than it was moving before. The faster the wheel of a car turns, the faster the car travels. But an automobile engine has a top speed, and the wheels can turn only as fast as the engine can turn them. The speed of a rocket is not limited by its engine. As long as we can supply more fuel, the speed can be increased. The rocket's top speed depends on the amount of fuel that it can carry with it. But a rocket engine needs something else besides fuel. A candle flame takes oxygen from the air. A fire can't burn without a supply of oxygen. If we cover the candle, it will continue to burn until it uses up the oxygen inside the jar. When the oxygen is gone, the candle goes out. But the fuel for rockets must burn in space, where there is little or no oxygen available so a rocket must carry its own supply of oxygen along with it. When oxygen is very cold, it becomes a liquid. Liquid oxygen is being pumped into this rocket. It will supply the rocket engine with the oxygen it needs in order to burn fuel where there is no air. But every pound of liquid oxygen and fuel loaded aboard adds to the weight of the rocket. And the rocket must work hardest in its first moments of flight when its load of fuel is the heaviest. First, the rocket must start moving from a dead stop. And you know that the air close to the Earth is thick. You can see the force of this thick air moving the sailboat. At the beginning of its flight, the rocket must push its heavy load of fuel through this thick air. By the time this rocket has reached the thinner air high above the earth, it has used all of its fuel and the rocket slows down and falls back to Earth. One way to use rocket fuel more efficiently is to burn it in multi-stage rockets. A multi-stage rocket is simply several rockets mounted on top of each other. The bottom rocket is called the first stage. On top of it is the second stage and so on. This multi-stage rocket has three stages. The first stage is a big rocket. It starts the multi-stage rocket moving and lifts it up through the thick atmosphere close to the Earth. This is hard work, and soon the first stage has burnt all of its fuel. Now the smaller second stage rocket can go to work. With a burst of speed, it leaves the big first stage behind. It lifts the small third stage rocket along with it. 
the second stage burns out. The third stage is coasting at high speed through thin air when it is fired. It needs to burn only a small amount of fuel to go very fast and very far. If a rocket is not properly guided, its flight is likely to be short and disastrous. Rockets must have precisely accurate guidance systems to control their flights. A spinning gyroscope is the heart of many rocket guidance systems. As long as a gyroscope is spinning, it will resist changing its position, no matter how you turn the base on which it rests. Two gyroscopes are mounted in the nose of this rocket model. No matter how the rocket turns off its course, the gyroscopes remain in the same positions. The electronic brain of the rocket is able to measure the difference between the direction of the rocket as it moves through space and the direction of the spinning gyroscope, which never changes. These measurements are sent back to the engine, which is the steering mechanism for most rockets. An airplane is steered by moving fins on the tail and the wing in the stream of air that rushes past them. But a rocket travels where there is no thick air and where fins would have nothing to move against. Many large rockets are steered in the same way that you steer an outboard motorboat, by turning the motor. Impulses from the electronic brain turn the rocket engine. When the direction of the jet action turns, the direction of its reaction, which lifts the rocket, also turns and puts the rocket back on course. T minus 60 seconds and counting. We have seen that rocket power doesn't depend on friction. And a rocket doesn't need anything to push against. Rocket power is a reaction to an action. A rocket lifts itself up from the ground. From the sky rocket to modern rockets is only a beginning in the development and use of rocket power. Freed from the surface of the Earth and the atmosphere that surrounds it, rockets can become explorers into new worlds of knowledge. Thank you.